Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Mix It Up Trivia Poly Pop Live graphics tutorial. Now, you've probably seen the video of the trivia game that I created in Poly Pop Live. Actually, the game is running from Mix It Up, and Poly Pop Live is only being used as a graphical user interface, basically. When the game in Mix It Up is running, when it wants to display the text for the trivia question, I'm having Polypop do that. And then when each player is uh, joining the game with their answer, I'm having Polypop show a player card and what number they chose. So the game is actually running and mix it up, but Polypop is being used to display the actions on the screen versus just in chat because the trivia game just like slots and spin and the other ones are basically chat games, but I'm adding graphics to this just like I did with the roulette so that you can see on the screen what's going on. So if people are playing, because sometimes chat moves really fast, and so you won't even be able to see the question sometime if it's, uh, if it's running really fast. So this way, you get a chance to see the question, see the answers, be able to choose your answer. You can see who is uh, participating in the game and everything else. So it's, it's a nice little package here. And I'm doing this this way because I wanted people to understand the trivia game concept and design. One of the things that I've noticed in the Discord is that people really don't know how to program. And they don't understand basic programming uh, techniques and procedures. They don't understand the relationship between variables and their usage and how the way you mix it up is written. It's written in a way that it, each one of the actions is like a, a, a function or a several team. It, it fires off and does its own thing. That right there, I think, is confusing to some people because people think that it's a top-down operation where one thing happens and everything else waits until that's done, then the next thing happens and everything waits until the next thing. No, it will go down the line and fire off all those things and it will happen all at once unless you use the wait command to stop the operation. The wait command is the only thing that stops stuff in between. So if you want to put a graphic on the screen and then have everything else below it wait for a certain amount of time before you, you play the next sound or you put text on the screen, you better put that wait command in there because otherwise everything's gonna happen all together, boom. Even if it's 10 things in that list, boom, all 10 of them are gonna fire off unless you have weights in there. And if you don't understand that about programming and don't understand how to control the flow of the action, then that's when you get confused and things don't work the way you think they should and you're saying, well, why is my video still playing if the graphic has already gone off the screen and why isn't the text appearing when it should? Because you have to know how and where to control all of these things. So <clears throat> now what I'm doing here could have been done easier, but what I wanted to do was break down how I did this. I took a game that existed and mixed it up and fleshed it out so that I could add polypop graphics to it so that when the game take an, take an action, the polypop graphics will reflect that action. And also to show and test the polypop WebSocket to make sure that Mix It Up can talk to the polypop WebSocket and that you can actually do anything worthwhile with it. Uh, which you can, you can do a, a lot with it. It doesn't talk back, so you can't get responses back or know when things have or have not happened. And I have a workaround for that too, but uh, for right now, what we're talking about is how I took the mixed up version of trivia, because other bots have trivia games, but they don't have events. With their with the, with, um, with stream, stream elements and um, a couple of the other bots, you can go in there and change the text a little bit, and, I, and you can change the winner message and the loser message, but it's only one of each. Where with this game here, I have five winner messages, five loser messages. So 
it, you know, it varies, so it, it doesn't get boring and say the same thing over and over again. You know, so, and that's because of using mix it up and the ability to randomly choose functions in a group, which is what the action group does. So, and, and now understanding how all of this stuff works is the solution to you solving all of your problems. If you want to do something, I mean, if you want to drive your car and you need to go to the store, you first need to know how to drive, okay? And then knowing how to drive is operating the vehicle. And then you have to know how to navigate the streets and know the rules of the road in order to get safely from point A to point B and back. In the programming world, I don't think people are doing that with regard to mix it up or polypop based on what I'm seeing in Discord because um, people are kind of like falling into how this stuff works instead of having a good understanding of how programming works. And if you just took a basic course in Visual Basic, you don't even have to get to the point where you're writing any code. Just understand how it all works together. You know, understand how procedures and routines and functions work. Um, if you read an object-oriented code, just understand how the class is created and, and how the fields work inside. And if, because that's what you're dealing with here. So a lot of the questions that are happening in the Discord are because people don't understand basic programming concepts. So hopefully, if you follow through this, and we're gonna have chapter markers and everything else, uh, it'll help you gain some understanding, hopefully, hopefully. This project started off as a test of the Polypop WebSocket and turned into the Mix It Up Trivia Polypop style game. And the following is how it was uh, created, because yeah, I was just trying to figure out the WebSocket. First, a few things need to be explained. Mix It Up is where the game lives. It's a Mix It Up game. Polypop responds to WebSocket alerts and performs its actions. So like I said, when, when you start the trivia game, it puts out a question and four possible answers. So I've, I've uh, sent that data to Polypop, so now Polypop pops up on the screen along with a tile that says trivia game and shows you the four questions, and then it waits. Then the chat show, the chat game, the chat, I'm sorry, shows the original game in text. So you was just, if you were just playing this as a text game, you're still seeing that in chat. So it gives you a one-to-one -one relationship of how I added graphics to each section of the game. <clears throat> and then the key to the Mix It Up Polypop interaction is events in Mix It Up talking to the WebSocket alerts. There are multiple events in the trivia game. There's one where the game starts, where uh, players join the game. Then there's one where the game determines who wins. Another, another one determines who loses. And then at the end, it shows you the right answer. And in that end one, I go and show who has the right answer and who has the wrong answer. And this project video will have two parts, the Mix It Up events and coding and the Polypub Live WebSocket alerts with the completion done in the second part of the set. This video is all mix it up. It's gonna show where I'm talking to Polypop Live WebSocket, but I'm not showing any Polypop stuff in this video because you need to understand this side because the Polypop side is a whole different animal. You know, I mean, it's, it's similar in that, uh, and how the, how the code is structured over there and how you interact with things over there. Uh, I would love for you just to get an understanding of Mix It Up first, and it would make understanding Polypop and, and other uh, software like this a, a lot easier to understand once you figure out how to properly group things together. One of the problems of doing this kind of thing is that if you don't understand basic coding, doing this will be difficult and things won't work the way you think they should. So my hope is that this introduction 
will help you get trivia working and use it as a jumping off point to future coding, hopefully. One of the first things that need to be done is to figure out how you track everything. And what is everything? It's all of the things that are important to gameplay. When you are really writing a program professionally, the first thing you do when you're writing code is you get out a pad and paper or, you know, or a notepad or something on your screen and you write down all the things that, that need to happen in this game in order for it to work. And what information do you need to track in order for you to follow the game to make sure everything is working? And if you get to points in the game where you need to ask a question, you have to have the data available to provide you the answer. So that's what this is all about right here. So the things that are important to gameplay, player answer number chosen. So when it shows you the question and the four answers and players start picking a number from one to four, you have to track that for every player. You have to know what answer player one pick, two pick, three pick. Uh, you have, number two, you have to no, count the number of winners and losers. Well, when you go on through the win cycle and the lose cycle, the software actually helps you do this by, every time it goes through the win, winner cycle, what I have is a variable that counts. So it counts the number of winners, counts the number of losers each round. And number three, number of players who join the game. There's a routine, uh, an event, that when each player joins the game, it says, welcome and your username to the game. So there also count how many people are joining. Mix it up trivia variables. Special, special identifiers and mix it up are variables. I know them as variables, special identifiers is something that kind of trips my tongue up. So if I say variables, I'm talking about a special identifier, okay? One of the things that I found in the docs but haven't seen in Discord is the fact that you can create your own variables. And so I did. And there is an action that says special identifiers action and the first part of it is the variable you're creating and the second line to the right is the data you want to go in this variable, or that could be another special identifier with information that you want to put in your own variable that you're creating, and that's what I did right here. Trivia loss count, trivia win count, trivia join count, prize amount message, and trivia cards reset. These are all variables that I created that track the data that, that I just mentioned earlier in order for me to know what's happening in the game. The Twitch cards reset variable will be discussed near the end when we get to sending data to Polypop. Because that variable actually tells the game whether or not it's time to tell Polypop to reset all the, the player cards, which would be at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, you reset all the cards and you clear all the choices because a brand new game is ready to start. Okay, well, let's break down the events in the gameplay, then talk about what each event is responsible for. If you look in uh, Mix It Up, under games, and go to trivia, you'll see what I'm ready to talk about right here. So if you in mix it up, you know, you go to the hamburger menu on the left, and you go down to games, and then if you haven't, you know, picked any games to, to you know, to start using or anything, you might not see anything, so you can go and pick trivia. And then once you click on the edit button on trivia, these events will be in there and you'll see these, okay? The sequence are of, in the sequence of the events that in the, in the order that they occur are as follows. First, the started event, which that's starting the game. User join, so after the started event and it tells you what the question is and give you the four answers, then users are invited to join. Then the next event is users join and sit there and wait for users to put in their number, their guess from one to four. And then after the timer runs out, then it tells you of those people that played the game, which users chose the wrong answer, so who, which users lost. Then it tells you which users actually chose the right number, and it tells you which users won. Then the correct answer shows you which answer was correct. 
And basically the user win and the correct answer happen like really back to back. So you see the loss, losers, and then you see the win and then the correct answer, and then the, uh, the game is over. Events can be found in the game's trivia menu. So if you look in there and you'll see all the events I just mentioned, then you click on that edit button, that's the button right there in the center, and you should see the trivia game console and the event edit button. If you look at the little picture there, you'll see that in each one of those edit buttons, that's where I put code. If you go in there, uh, in the start it and the, um, the correct answer, those have stuff in it, but I think the um, user join may not, or it might be that you use the win and the loss may not. <clears throat> and the numbers that are on there shows you the order in which they occur. Okay, now we need to set up the variables so they can count the number of people playing the game and the answers they chose. With the exception of the prize amount message, all variables have a is math expression selected. All variables have the make globally usable selected. The trivia variables that count are numeric, so they need to be, they need to the is math expression toggle set. The prize amount message is a text variable and as such will not perform any math, so it doesn't need to have the is math expression and the prize amount message is determined at the very end. So basically what happens is either there are no winners and the prize amount message just says uh, there are no winners, try again. Or if there is at least one winner, then it says congratulations you are one of how many people played that won the game and they, you know, so that's what the difference there is. So it waits till the end of the game, it looks at how many, if there's any winners at all, and if so, it determines what uh, prize amount message will be uh, used. And here's the gameplay as, as I see it. I played the game about 100 times already before I made this video. The question is presented along with the answers. And then the game pauses while the players make their choices. And then the game pause timer ends and the user, lo user lose event starts and starts showing you who lost. Then user event win runs, then the correct answer event, you know, almost like back to back. It shows you who won the game, then it shows you the correct answer. And then the game is over. And each one of these events has commands that control polypop and that count wins and losses. Let's dive into the events and see how this is wired up. I see a typo there. Know that the video has chapters so you can skip ahead, but I wouldn't if you don't know coding, and, and that's serious. You, you want to try to understand this, and the reason I got it laid out like this and I'm ch talking so much about it is because I want you to understand what's going on. Because if you don't under you may have to look at this video a couple of times, but if you don't understand how things are working and how the cycles are working and how the events work, then you're just hitting and missing. You know, if, if you really understood how this, that's how I came up with the game. I went in and looked at how everything was working. I said, man, I can just, you know, add this and add that, and then I'll be able to see the trivia on the screen. So the started event is where everything starts and cycles. This is where I set the trivia variables to zero. Clear the Twitch cards in Polypop and then send the question and answers to Polypop using a Polypop WebSocket alert, which is different from the Twitch alerts. Very different. Well, kind of different, I'll say that. They, the way you handle them and deal with them is pretty much the same. It's just that Twitch is not initiating any alerts the Polypop WebSocket is. So when you send code from Mix It Up to Polypop and you want to have alerts that only uh, work when that happens, then you look for the alerts under the WebSocket. And th that's what the difference here is. If somebody follows you or subscribes to you, then that action will be uh, dealt with in the Twitch alerts. So two different sections. <coughs> WebSocket alerts are just a way to send data and start actions in Polypop. They are not related to, nor do they respond to Twitch alerts. Different, like I just explained. 
But if you wanted to have a follower alert start a WebSocket alert, you would have to wire up the follower alert to the WebSocket alert. Now, really, if you wanted to have a follower alert uh, initiate an action that the WebSocket alert is connected to, then really what you would do is just connect the follower alert to the action itself and not to the WebSocket alert because the WebSocket alert is connected to the action in question and that, so the follower alert wants to, wants to also initiate that same action so you just connect the follower alert wire over to that action. I should have changed this around, but anyway. I know it's getting deep, but it's important to know what's happening in order to control it. Believe you me. Each time you start the game, you have to set trivia variables. I do this in an action group. This makes the event command list cleaner. Then I call this from the started event. So what you're looking at is the special identifier action. This creates variables. That's why it's called SI hyphen at the beginning. The special identifier name, there's the numbers only, no dollar sign. That's the variables I'm creating. And I'm starting off with zero. And then see the prize amount? The replacement text says no Talon. And that's, that's my currency on the channel is Talon. So that means no money. You, you didn't win anything. Okay, and this is the Polypop Live web socket. To the left here, you're seeing a standard uh, command action. And the command is running an action group that says trivia setup variables, right? Okay, so the trivia setup variables command is actually a Polypop command. Now that's the one at the bottom right. So the alert name where it says clear Twitch cards that's an actual alert name in Polypop under the WebSocket section. So you have the Twitch section, then you have all the alerts there, right? Then under there, there's a WebSocket section, and then all those alerts there. And then under there, you would create an alert called Clear Twitch Cards, so that when this ran, it would initiate that alert, and then whatever that alert is connected to, it would do something in Polypop, right? So this is like, Telling Polypop, hey, okay, run this command. Boom, and that's what it does. So it, it, it attaches to the um, whatever action or action sequence you have in Polypop, and um, it does whatever you're told to do over there. And it also, what you're not seeing in this example is that it can send variables over. So you can send text to Polypop, which is how I send the trivia question and answers, as well as how I send what data the person, what number the person chose and everything else, so. And this is where uh, the initial chat ha happens. This, this, because I still have the chat going. I just tried to modify it a little bit so that it's in sync with what's on the screen. So I'm using the user display name so it, it shows the upper and lowercase name. Um, at the bottom right is also showing how I am, is it zero white choices? You know, so when you start off, you choose white. Uh, I was trying to make them red. I, di I did that in the end. I just didn't change this command, but this basically zeroes out the cards so that there's no, uh, no data in them and we're starting from scratch. So that's basically, now understand that when you're building stuff like this, each little routine has a job. Okay, this is why I'm saying when you go in and think about this game, you have to break it down into steps. What do you have to do in order for this game to work? Well, you have to first start the game by clearing all the data and make sure everybody is reset to zero. And then once everybody reset to zero, then you can present the game. And then as people go into the game, you have to collect their responses and hold that. And then at the end of the game, you have to determine who made the correct choices and who didn't. And then you present that data. See, all those things require a job. So you have to do something in the program to make each one of those things happen, and they have to happen in order. And in some cases, you have to have a fail-safe so that if you attempt to do something and it doesn't work, you have to have an alternate method. 
or fail. That's when, it, when a program crashes is when it gets to a point where it can't do anything else and there's no fail safe, there's, there's no alternate method, so it just dies. Okay, now this is a polypop alert with data in it, like I was mentioning before. The variable name is what you use in polypop. When using these variables in polypop, you have to surround the variable with a less than and greater than sign. For example, user headline in polypop is entered as user headline with the greater than and less than signs surrounding it. Using the wires in polypop, you can send this data to many places, to text, both 2D and 3D text will accept this, to Twitch profile cards, and other elements in polypop that can receive data. You can, you don't always have to send text to text fields or links for pictures to show up. You can send numbers that change where an item is on the screen, or you can send hexadecimal information to change colors. You can send all this kind of stuff in, in these variables. It just depends on how you set it up. The act of sending the polypop alert also will run an action sequence in polypop along with the data transfer. So once you get this, you can do almost anything, and that is absolutely true. <clears throat> now what you're looking at here is there's an alert in polypop named Trivia 2D. This is, the, this is basically the setup, alert, the setup routine. And then you see the variables here. User headline, question area, user lose, Z winners, user joins, and then the game headline. Okay, so user headline. When the game comes up in Polypop, it says Classic Soul Trivia. And then under that it says username has started a game of trivia. And then under that is the questions and uh, answers. And then under that, where it says user lose, you have 25 seconds to type your answers. Now, it says user lose right there because it starts off saying you have 25 seconds to type your answers. And then when the losers are, are presented, they're also presented in this same space. That's why it's there. The Z winners is basically a binary value that tells whether or not the Twitch cards, because there's individual cards for each player that plays, whether or not they need to be reset. So they get flipped over with their back showing and then they're hidden. And the numbers above them are zeroed out. The user joins is also a, uh, a numeric value. It's supposed to be zero there where it says variable value, uh, but it's going in as a null value. Then the game headline, that's a text line that is at the bottom of the screen flashing that says everyone is welcome to play. The user joined event happens after the questions and answers are presented and the game waits on players to pick a number answer. That number and the fact that they join the game is announced in the event. You see the announcement in chat and on the Polypop screen as a Twitch profile card with their answer choice on top of the card. The event also counts how many players entered this round. I limited this to seven players because there wasn't much room on the screen for any more. More can play the game, but they won't be represented by a Twitch profile card. When a player joins the game, this event pops up the Twitch profile card and puts the number they chose on top of the card. So if 10 people play, the first seven will be represented by the Twitch cards on the screen. But if the eighth or ninth person won, there will be no, all the Twitch cards on the screen will be read or, or listed as loser, and then the one person that won, their name will be on the screen. Just their, their Twitch profile card would not because it only, it only made it for seven. I mean, there's a way to make it for more, but then I'd have to squeeze the questions and answers, and there wasn't a lot of screen space, so seven was a nice round number. And then uh, the user joined event. This event, um, occurs each time the event runs. The event runs and it's incremented. So the trivia joint count is whatever it was before plus one more. See what I mean? So it, it will start off at zero, and then when it goes through the first cycle, it'll be zero plus one, which would be one. And when it goes through the second cycle, it'd be one plus one, which would be two, you know, and it goes on and on like that. 
And then it displays a message saying, hey, user display name just joined the game. And that's in chat, okay? Now, this is the, is the polypop stuff. So, you know, if you look here, this is the user joined event. These are the things that are happening in order, okay? They're happening in order. First, we incremented the variable. Then we send a chat message out. Now we're checking to see what number of person this is that joined, right? Because the first person that joins, they get the first Polypop trivia card that's on the screen. The second person that joins gets the second card. Third person that joins gets the third card. See what I mean? So we need to know which one are you. So right here, it's asking, are you the first person that joined? If it is, then if you look where it says alerts, it says user one, then you're user one now. So it takes the username and puts it in the username variable, and the arg1 text is the choice you made. So if, if you're DJ Mo and you put three in there, then username is DJ Mo, and argument one text is three. Okay, so, and this is being sent to Polypop. And on the Polypop side, what's going to happen is, is that the, the first card, this is user one, the first card is going to pop up, and you're going to see the back of it. And then it's going to, going to do some kind of little twist and flip around, and then you're going to see who the user is, and then the number is going to pop up and shake on the top of the card, and uh, then you know what number they chose. That's what this routine does. So this sends the data that Polypop needs to use. But on the other end, Polypop receives this data and takes the actions I just described. Now, this is if the, uh, the person that joined was the seventh person. Okay, so then it says user seven, and it, again, takes the username and takes the choice they made and sends it to Polypop so Polypop can flip that number seven card over with their picture on it and their choice above it. After the game pause timer ends, the user lose event runs, which will pop up a Twitch profile card on the right side of the screen with the red answer number above the Twitch profile card to indicate a wrong answer. It counts the number of players that lost and picks a random loser chat message. That's what I, I said, I have about seven or eight of those. I have an action group that has seven or eight loser chat messages that rotate as well as winning chat messages. So you don't get the same winning message or the same loser message. And if you heard me before, there's only seven cards on the screen. Most of the time, four people, five people are playing trivia. So I've never had an instance where I've had uh, four people win and we'll see if four people win and three people lose, it, uh, still the cards are the same. It's just if I get past seven people, then I'm going to have a problem with the placement of the winners and the losers. But I just put the losers on the right side with red, winners on the left side with the, with the green, just to be able to differentiate between the two instead of just having, just changing the color of the number on the top of it, because then you can just say like win, loss, win, loss. I just want to divide it up so we can show. And, just, and also add some versatility to the game because the ability to do it was there, so I did it. For those that lost this round, this event runs. Adds to the trivia loss count variable, displays a chat message, and displays a loser Twitch profile card. Twitch profile cards are all the same. The only thing that indicates a winner or a loser is whether the number on top of your choice is red or green. And if you look at this, you can see the steps. It increments the counter, sends out the loser message, and checks which card you are. And then it goes down and changes the color of the card and everything else and, and opens it up on the other side. That's why condition one opens seven and condition two opens six. That's what those numbers are about. So we're starting the loser event, and so it's gonna add one to the trivia loss count. Now, this is the first time through, trivial loss count equals zero, so it's gonna be zero plus one equals one, and on and on. <clears throat> then now, here's the run command. The run command is going out and get 
a loser message. You know, so this action group just, uh, it'll go to the chat and play one of the seven or eight loser messages that are, that are in there so that all the loser messages don't sound the same. Okay, then this here determines uh, whether or not I need to uh, reset the, uh, the Twitch cards. This conditional statement test Twitch cards reset variable determine whether it's time to clear the Twitch profile cards that were used by the user join event. This is one of the variables that was created and reset by the trivia init variable action group. So when you go into the join event and you give your answer and everything else, a card pops up, a Twitch card starting from the left, moving to the right. So when it's time to go through the loser events and winner events, all those cards get cleared and then the loser event puts the losers on the, the, the right side and then the winner events is going to put the winners on the left side. So it had to go through and clear the screen first so they can go back and now present the winners and losers. So that's what this is doing. So it's, it's, going, it's determining whether or not I need to clear the screen. So if the reset is zero, then I need to clear the screen. Then I'm going to set the variable to one so I know I've already cleared it. So if I had to come back through this routine again, I know it's already been done. And that's what this does right here. It, it sets it to one now that I've done the clearing. The, the SI equals special identifier or variable. I'm setting the variable to one to clear the profile cards. When the game gets back to the started event, it will reset it to zero. So it knows now because it's going to have to go through this routine a couple of times for every loser, but it only want to reset the card one time. It resets all of them once. Then the losers are presented on the loser side, and then the winner event is going to be the same, except if it presents the winners on the left side. And so now this is determining which loser are you. So if it's one, and remember, the losers start on the right side, moving left. And the winners start on the left side, moving right. So if you're loser number one, then you're going to go to card number seven because that's the, the last card on the right side. If you're going to be moving from right to left, that's where you start. This is the conditional statement that evaluates trivia loss count variable. It sends Polypop data to create the loser Twitch profile card in the first call. The second call is to mark the player as a loser with a red answer number above the Twitch profile card. That's what lose-7 does. Now, this statement here is if you were, if, if seven people were playing and you were the seventh loser, you will pop up on the leftmost card, which is the number one card. So again, the username, the choice you made. And then the lose one will change that choice to red to show that it was a wrong choice. This is the last conditional statement to test for losers and display a Twitch profile card. There are seven Twitch profile cards coded. More than seven can play, but only the first seven will have a profile card. All winners will be listed at the bottom of the screen in a winner's row. Username is the username in Polypop. Choice is choice in Polypop with the um, greater than, less than sign surrounding it. When you put that into the into Polypop into the, um, into the field. Username is a mix it up variable and arg1 test is another mix it up variable. Those are the answer choices the player made. User1 is the alert name in Polypop and lose1 is also a Polypop website and alert. So user1 controls the card and it puts your profile picture on the card and then it puts the choice you made above the card. Lose one takes that choice number and colors it either red, or well, in this case it colors it red because there's a win one that will color it green. The user win event runs for every player that has a winning answer, counts the number of winners and pops up a Twitch profile card for the winners with the winning number above their card. A chat message is displayed and the game moves on to its final event, correct answer. 
Here's the user event, just like the loser event. As far as counting winners, so if this is the first time through, trivia win count will be zero, and it'll be zero plus one. Then it's going to come in and find out, okay, sometimes the, loser, the winner event will run before a loser event. So here again is testing. Twitch card reset. So since we already went through loser, right? And loser set this to one. So when it got here, since this is equal to one, the clear Twitch card routine will not run. And this won't happen either. Um, the, this, this right here would just say, uh, you just won. If you're one of the people that had the right answers, then it'll pop up in the chat, you know, you, you just won. It, it, all the people that got the right answers, they'll start appearing in the chat saying, just won. And also, they'll start appearing on the screen as well. So this will determine which winner are you. So a trivia win count equals one right here. So you're going to uh, go to the first card on the left, user one card, username, and then the argument is the choice that you made. Win one will change that choice to green to show you as a winner. The final event, correct answer, displays the prize message and the final answer. After this event, the game ends. To play again, just enter trivia in the chat. Okay, so this wraps it up. So trivia win count. So this, one, this is where I'm determining what the prize amount message is going to be. If there are no winners, then I'm just going to say, you know, try again. So the conditional statement determines which prize message that is displayed in chat and on the screen. This is the first one. The next slide has the other one. So if the trivia win count is greater than zero, means somebody won, right? Then it says everyone who guessed it won whatever amount of money was set for the payout. This right here says that if no one won, if the trivia win count is zero, right, if nobody won, then the prize message amount says, I mean, the prize amount message says try again, because why say everybody won when nobody won? This doesn't make any sense to do that. So that's why this is here. If there's no winners, then try again. And then this is the polypop data that's sent to tell you what the correct answer is. After all the wins and all the losses are dealt with, when those cards are popped up and you see who won and who lost, then at the top of the screen, this information is going to pop up. It's going to show you the correct answer is, and then it's going to show the correct answer from the four that were displayed, and then it's going to uh, tell you how many people won and how many people lost, and then it's going to say the winners this round, and then it's going to show a list of the winner names right there. Um, the user join event shouldn't even be there, so don't worry about that. But the game headline is let's play another round. See, so that's so we're at the end of the game. It's telling you who won. It's telling you how many people won, and then it's encouraging you to play another round of trivia. So at this point, game's over. Everything is stopped. Now, if you don't do anything else, the screen won't change, nothing will happen, nothing will go forward. If you wanted to play another round of trivia, then you just put in exclamation point trivia, and then everything starts again, where the screen will clear, and the, the, the trivia message will spin around, and you will see the new question and the new four answers, and the clock will start ticking for people to join again. The next video is going to show the other side is going to show when you get to the screen right here and, and all these, these variables are being passed over, the next video is going to show what happens when, when those variables get to polypop. That's the next video. This is DJ Rico bringing you Mix It Up Trivia using Polypop Live graphics as a graphical user interface. The game is normally a Twitch uh, chat game. But what I've done is I've fleshed it out so that you can see 
uh, live and sometimes 3D graphics representing the trivia game, which makes it a lot more fun. And you, you see your profile picture as you pick your number, and you can see whether you win or loss and for up to seven people. So coming up next will be the polypop part of this. This, this here is just to help you understand the mix-it-up side of it and hopefully help you understand how the programming works and how events work so that you can maybe take that information and build something of your own. I mean, because Mix-It-Up is one of the most versatile bots out there. I mean, StreamerBot allows you to program in C-sharp, and I, I'm a C-sharp programmer, but Mix-It-Up makes it easier. I could spend a month writing some C-sharp code to do what I can do in Mix-It-Up in a couple of hours. So Mix-It-Up is hot. Anyway, thank you very much. This is Rick Neal signing off.